there a time as a leader that you've had to compromise? Always. Such as? Always. What's an example? Well, in business every day, in business every day, you, um, you're, if you don't constantly readjust goals, you know, you start with your goals and then you readjust them to reality and that's a compromise, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And if you change a budget, isn't that because people tell you that it isn't going to work, isn't that a compromise? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if, if you're making a decision about somebody, every, it's true in every walk of life, you know, you might have two or three candidates and you, two or three of you are interviewing them and I think Joe's best and uh, they think Jim's the best. Well, there's a compromise. There's, there's compromise in everything. Carol says be home at four. I get home at five. That's a compromise. Have you ever been in a situation where maybe someone you're doing business with or wanted to do business with didn't want to do it with the integrity that you demand? How do you deal with that? My business partners would tell you I walked away. Okay. Walked away. I'll tell you a story, a short story, I hope, about a man who called me and said he wanted to sell his business. And he really was desperate. And I'd talked to him for years and years and years. But when I got there, um, we went through the whole thing and I started a project that lasted six months, six to eight months to sell this business. He was counting on me to do a great job for him. Selling the business is a big thing for him. And I found on my second or third visit, he was drinking too much. And he was in the bottle a little too much, and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And I faced him and I said, pal, I'm not selling your business because it's the biggest thing in your life. And I'm not selling it for a drunk. You're going to be sober when you make these decisions. And he says, I won't take another drink. And for four months, he didn't take a drink. I was out there every 10 days at this place. Big business. It was a, you know, 80 to $100 million transaction. It was a good work. The family had worked for generations to build that. And he had made the decision to sell it. And then when he was going through the process, he was getting drunk. I was not going to sell it. And so he stopped drinking. I got the whole deal done. And the day the deal was to close, I landed in the city. He met me at the airport and he was drunk. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest disappointment. Mm -hmm. I told him how sorry I was. But he had done it sober. But why didn't he stay sober? That was a disappointment. That was a disappointment. But I've told a lot of people either because they were drinking or because they were, had two sets of books, not a lot. I've seen people that didn't do things right. We wouldn't. We didn't work with them, mm -hmm. and um, we don't. We don't tolerate associates that have habits that aren't consistent with our values. We just. Mm -hmm. We said in the very beginning, right. you're known by the friends you keep. You're known by the associates you're with. You go where people are like you. Well, that's pretty much where it is. You have to, you have to know what you stand for.